We started with 10 teams in the race for the ANZ Championship Trophy and after 14 rounds of the most unpredictable and competitive season in the sports history, we are down to the final four contenders. As I say hello and welcome to Centre Pass, the official video podcast of the ANZ Championship. Dan Ryan here alongside Sherelle McMahon. And Sherelle, what a season we've had. It comes down to the final round, the very last game of this season to determine our top four. We are set for a cracking final series. We are, absolutely. And it's so hard to predict. We've got the Vixens and the Mystics up there, as well as the Magic and the Thunderbirds. And all of those teams have really earned their position in this final four. So it, it'll be a great final series. It was an unforgettable last round of the competition. Let's check out all of the results from round 14. It, of course, started on Saturday in Invercargill with an 18-goal victory for the Melbourne Vixens against the Southern Steel. That locked in the minor premiership for the Melbourne side. The Adelaide Thunderbirds guaranteed a final spot with a 21-goal victory over the Canterbury Tactics in Adelaide. The Fever ending their season on a high with a two-goal win over the Central Pulse, 40-38. to The Mystics coming from behind to defeat the New South Wales Swifts by one goal in Auckland. And then the Magic securing their finals berth, defeating the defending champions by 10 10 goals in Hamilton on Monday. Sherelle, let's quickly have a look at the Swifts and the Mystics game. It was a performance, it was a game, should I say, that really had a bearing on the top four. The Swifts needed to win. They were in control. They were up by four at three-quarter time, but a 15 to 10 final quarter effort from the Mystics got them across the line in the end. They did, and the Mystics were very, very impressive in that last quarter when they really, when the pressure really came on. We had Latu with another 100% game, if you can believe it, and Maria Tutaya really up there in her numbers. She shot 24 goals for that match, so really, really great tight performance there by their attack lineup. The interesting one, Anna Harrison not taking the court with her calf injury, so that'll be one to keep an eye on through these next few weeks. Yeah, for the New South Wales Swift, Susan Prattley, another really impressive individual performance, 32 goals from 34 attempts at a very outstanding 94%. For the Swifts, they'll finish the season in fifth place. They needed to win that game to have a chance at the finals and hope results fell their way. Not the case, but fifth result is a reasonable finish for the Swifts, considering not many people at the start of the season gave them a chance at all. They didn't. They had so many changes. The new coach with Catherine Cox obviously heading over to Perth. So, you know, reasonable finish for them and, and I guess um, they'll be looking for next season. Let's have a look now at the Magic and the Firebirds game. It was a huge game for so many reasons on Monday night in Hamilton. The Firebirds needed to win it. Of course, their season was on the line. It was a long shot for them to make the final. But the Magic just outstanding. Their ninth consecutive win on the trot. They are on fire. They are, as we mentioned last week, on the bottom of the ladder after four rounds and then finishing this season uh, without a loss for the last nine. So they are incredibly impressive. You know, I mentioned uh, Latu with the 100% game. Irene Van Dyke had that again. So, you know, things are really starting to, to click for the, the big the big plays in these teams. What was interesting with the Magic is they've normally had patches throughout a game where they've fallen off just momentarily, but they won every single quarter of that match convincingly. So they've put together 60 minutes, which is an ominous sign for the rest of the field. It really is, and I'm sure that uh, there's the other teams in the final four were probably maybe crossing their fingers that they didn't quite sneak in there because they are in some really great form. And, you know, as you said, they won every quarter, but they've really been putting teams away. Laura Langman, another outstanding performance in the middle for the Magic. Let's have a look at the ladder at how it stands at the end of the home and away season. It has been the best home and away season in the history of the ANZ champs. There's the top four, the Vixens, the Mystics, Magic and the Thunderbirds. We mentioned the Swifts in fifth. The Firebirds, Sherelle, succumbing to the Premiership curse. They finish in sixth place. Yeah, and isn't it unbelievable that, again, we see the, the Premiers from the previous year not backing up and making the playoffs, which is incredible, really, particularly with the Firebirds who have such a strong potent lineup. Worth to mention the Central Pulse finishing in seventh place with five wins for the season, their best result in the history of the ANZ champs. Yeah, absolutely. They have, you know, recruited reasonably well. They, they've kind of strengthened um, their lineup in a, different, a number of different positions, and Caitlin Thwaites, I think, a real standout for them in their attacking. A couple of disappointing seasons, I suppose, for the West Coast Fever, failing to live up to the expectations and all the hype in the preseason, but expect them to be a different outfit next year. And the Southern Steel in ninth place, their worst season as well. Yeah, that's right. The Fever, an interesting one. I mean, for, for a few years now, we've been hearing about their coming, they're putting the pressure on, and they just kind of haven't quite taken that step. But maybe, you know, with a bit of a consolidating year this year, um, they, they might take that next step. And yeah, still, after being up in the finals in the first few rounds, um, they've really slipped away in the second half of the season. And unfortunately, again, for the Canterbury Tactics, taking the wooden 
Melbourne Spoons for the third consecutive year. So a disappointing run for them again. And then worth noting too that Anna Galvin and Marie Bowden officially announcing their retirement at the end of the game against the Thunderbirds on Sunday. Yeah, that's right. A, a disappointing season for them, I guess. Um, and who knows, we've, we've got two official announcements of retirements and we may see a few, a few more as we go on. Who knows? Drop was a pretty big round of the ANZ Champs. Who was your performer of the week for round 14? Well, my performer of the week was actually Rachel Rasmussen from the Mystics. She came on into that defensive lineup when Anna Harrison's obviously off with her calf injury. Uh, and she had a great game, turned the ball over quite a bit and just gives them that little bit of extra flexibility in that defence line. Yeah, another viable option for the Mystics, that's for sure. My performer of the week goes to ANZ Champs rookie Karen Howarth. I think she's been outstanding the last couple of weeks in goal shooter for the Vixen. She's now owned that goal shooter bib and answered all the questions that the Vixen needed responding to in that position. 26 goals for the game and hard to believe that it's her first year in the ANZ Champs. Yeah, that's what you've got to remember. She seems to come on with so much calm and poise, but um, yeah, just, just a young player and doing extremely well. Well, it is now time to turn our attention to the final four contenders for the title for this year. We've got the Vixens, the Mystics, the Magic and the Thunderbirds all in the hunt for the ANZ Championship trophy. Sherelle, we're going to do a bit of a form guide and have a look at each of these four teams and how they stand coming into the final series. Let's first start about the Melbourne Vixens. Ten wins, three losses. They win the minor premiership, their first to finals appearance since 2009. A cracking start to the year, six on the trot, and then they lost three. A bit of a mid-season glitch, but they've come home with a charge. They have, and you know, the last two matches that they played over in New Zealand were fairly solid, really, and for me, the key to those games were their first quarter, and throughout the season, they've struggled a little bit with their start, but at quarter time against both the Pulse and the Steel, they were up by 10. So huge start for them. So maybe they found the key uh, to that start, which could be the key to them really pushing on through this final series. They certainly aren't the right to host the major semi-final, that is for sure. In second place is the Northern Mystics from New Zealand. Of course, last year's runners-up. They also finished with 10 wins and three losses. They were the team to beat mid-season, Sherelle. We had all the hype and the X Factor surrounding the chairlift, thinking that that could be the thing that saw them lift the trophy up at the end of the season. But it's fair to say they're probably not as dangerous or in the form right now as what they were, say, a month ago. Yeah, I think that that's probably fair to say. They had a really tight loss only a few weeks ago against the Magic. So that's an interesting one. Could be a good indicator of form. Um, there's, they've had a few close games, um, some that they've kind of secured and others that have gone the other way. Harrison, for me is the big one, whether she comes up from this calf injury. Uh, she is such a huge integral part of their defensive lineup and gives them so much energy. So many big game players in that Magic outfit, you just cannot underestimate them or count them out just yet. In third place, Sherelle was the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic. Nine wins, four losses. As we mentioned, they lost their four, first four games of the season. They were tenth at round four. They've just won their last nine on the trot. Fair to say they've been under pressure all year, but they're now well accustomed to having to win every single game. That's right, and going into a final series, it's sometimes good to have that pressure and, and be used to it, I guess. And aren't their top players really starting to click incredibly well? I mean, they, they've never missed a final series, if you can believe it, in the ANZ history. And uh, they their defensive lineup in particular is starting to really click very nicely. Our final finals contender is the Adelaide Thunderbirds, of course. Nine wins and four losses as well for them, the same as the Magic they finished in fourth. They have dominated at certain times throughout the year, but fair to say they've missed opportunities to really secure a top two spot. But on their day, and with all players firing, they are untouchable. Yeah, I, I think that you're right. I think um, this is a really, t this is a team outfit. This is every single player on that court really doing it for each other. They have spoken about it all year. Obviously, there's a few key plays with Borrego and, and Von Berto and Shani Layton at the back there, but th this is really a team performance for the Thunderbirds. And if they, as you say, if they click, they're very tough to beat. Sherelle, well, it is time now to preview our semi-final matchups. The major semi-final will be between Melbourne Vixens and the Northern Mystic, the winner having the right to host the grand final. It will be played on Sunday at Rod Laver Arena, 16,000 seat capacity venue. It's going to be absolutely amazing. First time netball has been played in that venue. And Sherelle, their previous encounter was in round eight and it was the Mystics that got up by four goals. Absolutely, and, and that's a really big point to make, really. The, the Mystics have often struggled when they've come over to Australia, but they've kind of got over that hoodoo uh, and have, have really put together a good win. Uh, well, that was quite early in the season, but still, it's, it's a good one for them. And, um, you know, for me, there's there's a number of keys here, but particularly the Vixens attacking lineup and how they click. They've been tinkering with that quite a bit 
during the season, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes against a really strong lineup in defence. Interesting note for the Melbourne Vixens at their front line, Karen Howarth, Tegan Caldwell, Madison Brown are all playing in their very first final series. So a bit of pressure on those guys to see how they handle the situation. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you kind of forget that sometimes, but yeah, new experience for some of those players. And on the flip side, the Mystics have quite a bit of experience. For me, um, the Latu mentor matchup will be a real key to this because Latu can absolutely take teams apart. So um, that's going to be a big one and possibly the Tutaia and Chatfield one, you know, up that end as well will be important. Yeah, matchups are plenty on that court. That is a major semi final, the Vixens hosting the Northern Mystics. The elimination semi final, the minor semi is between the Magic and the Adelaide Thunderbirds. It's played on Hamilton on Monday night. Sherelle, I think these two played in round. 13 just a couple of weeks ago it was a 17 goal win for the Magic so a big task for the Thunderbirds to try and turn around 17 goals in this semi-final. Yeah it, it will be a huge one but um, if any team can do it it's the Thunderbirds they seem to have a really strong belief as I mentioned before in in that team so you know for me the Langman and Von Berto matchup will be great I think maybe Langman took the the cake a couple of weeks ago but I've got no doubt that Nat Bomberto will be pushing and, and trying to make a big influence and I think that that key matchup will be you know, really, really important to this game. Another deciding factor, Sherelle, may be the Adelaide Thunderbirds front line. Centre through to goal shooter, up against Williams and De Bruyne. It will take a full team effort to get on top of that Magic back line. Without a doubt, they have pulled things together so well and we've spoken all year about the Thunderbirds defensive lineup too. I thought that uh, Leighton's lack of height perhaps really showed up against Irene Van Dyke a couple of weeks ago. So really looking forward to see how the Thunderbirds adjust to that. Well, it is going to be tight, that is for sure. And speaking of tight, our tipping competition could not get any closer, Sherelle. Dee Ryan has jumped in front by one after a perfect round in round 14. Oh, well done. You're only one point <laughs> behind, so you're still in with a chance. Who are your tips for this week's semi-finals? Well, my, I'm going with the Vixens at home over the Mystics and the Magic again at home over the Thunderbirds, but gee, it's hard to pick. Yeah, the beauty of it is that all four teams basically can win on their day, so it's going to be outstanding. I'm going completely opposite to you, Sherelle. I'm going with the Mystics to get over the line against the Vixens and then the Thunderbirds to get over the line against the Magic. So, as we said, anyone's game, whoever shows up on the day, they will win their semi-final matches. Yeah, that's right. And that's why this season has been so great. It's so unpredictable and exciting. Well, that is about it for another episode of Centre Pass. Thank you very much for joining us. The semi-finals are finally here. Make sure you jump onto the ANZ Champs website. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to register your all-star team, Sherelle. It's one of the great things about the ANZ Championship and looking forward to seeing what the fans put out there as their best seven for the year. Definitely log on and put your team in. It's so tough to pick this season, but uh, it'll be interesting. Check your local guides for all of the broadcast details for the final series. We started with four. We'll be down to three next week. Make sure you tune in. We'll catch you then. Goodbye for now. Thank you to our sponsors, our principal sponsor, Associate sponsors, support sponsors and suppliers, and our broadcast partners.